Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk about sexual consent contracts. Now this wasn't top of my list of videos to do, but lots of people ask this question and it'll be easier for me to have a video that I can just send a link back and reply rather than writing out a full answer. You might want to pour yourself a drink because it's going to be one of those videos. So what is a sexual consent contract? Well, it's a document that details what activities that you and a prospective partner plan to get up to. Uh, some of them are real specific, like specific to a degree that I can't show them to you because YouTube would be very upset. But uh, so you detail what things you plan to do, what days you plan to do it on, for how many hours. And then at the bottom, you can sign to indicate that you are both consenting to those activities. So the idea is that everyone's on the same page and that later, if you're accused of having, you know, done something without consent, you can point to that piece of paper and say, listen, no, there was consent. I have a piece of paper and it says there was consent. So this piece of paper is going to keep me out of jail. Lots of places offer these contracts and you can find them on lots of these places that offer like free landlord tenancy agreements or business contracts. And these pages are not a good idea themselves maybe i'll do a separate video on that another time but uh some places offer to sell you a contract there have been apps that uh, around the same idea so there's lots of different places here's an example you know place online with a sexual consent contract form so the question people always have is are these a good idea will they help protect me from some sort of wrongful accusation and the short answer is, no, they're not. And I would go a step further to say that not only do I think that they're not going to be helpful, but they may actually be legally hazardous. They might actually increase your risk of going to jail if you have one. So let's talk about this and sort of break it down. The first question is, does the document do what it sort of purports to do on the, on the lid? Like, does it do what it says on the packaging? that it establishes that consent existed at any point. Well, not conclusively. All it does is it establishes that a piece of paper was signed. And keep in mind, if you're talking about an allegation of things happening without consent, well, the signing of the form can just be one of those things. You know, I went over to his house, I was planning to do some tutoring, and then suddenly he's making me sign this weird form is also, you know, yeah, that so there's actually a way that some of these places purport to uh, to get around this. And I'll show you that because they've got a neat little picture here of sign and engage. And you see how many people they've got there? That's three people because their their idea is that you'd be there with you and your prospective partner and a witness. You know, you'd bring in maybe a notary or a lawyer to witness you signing this contract and notarize it and. Now, just think about how that's going to go down. You know, you are out on a date, you're having a wonderful evening, you're going back to her place, and you're like, hold on, let me get a notary here. And, I mean, that's weird. Or maybe you're like, you know, no notary is going to show up at, you know, at midnight to help you get laid. This is not a service I personally offer, by the way, uh, at least not for any price you can afford. I will not show up to you know, to your house in the middle of the night to help witness you signing a document saying you're about to get laid. That is just not going to happen. And, you know, nobody's going to do that. But let's say you bring a buddy in to witness this. Well, now the thing is, hey, listen, there were two of them and one of me and they were making me sign this document. You're still not any better off. It's, uh, it's a terrible idea. But, you know, and let's go a step further here. Uh, either she's sober enough to remember what happened and therefore, you know, rem she knows that there's a document. She's not going to lie about that. So you're only going to be able to catch the most unsophisticated of liars there. Or if she's not sober enough to remember signing the document, you've got another problem because her consent may not matter if it's not valid legal consent because she's too drunk to legally consent to things. So, doesn't really do you a whole lot in terms of establishing that consent existed at any point in this transaction. But let's assume that it does. Let's assume that she says, yes, I signed this contract consensually, I agreed to it. It still doesn't help you 
because here in Canada, the law is, and I think this is probably the case in just about anywhere I can think of, but I can only speak to Canada, consent has to be continuous through the event. And she can change her mind. And I say she because it's usually, you know, that's usually the pattern, although not exclusively. But uh, the you and your partner each can change your mind. So let's say you are out and you've, you know, you've met a woman on Tinder, you've gone out, you're having a lovely date, you know, you've gone to dinner, you've gone for drinks, dancing, whatever else. And now she's telling you, listen, I can't wait till we get back to your place. We're going to do all of this wild stuff. She's being real detailed, real specific and real imaginative. And you're going, yes, this is fantastic. And you guys open the door to your apartment and she sees three feet of pizza boxes, as well as the life-size nude Stalin that you've got, who's standing at both full military attention and full non-military attention. And suddenly, for some reason, she changes her mind about what she wants to do, and now she just wants to go home because she has an appointment at literally any other place other than there. Well, you know, notwithstanding whatever promises she may have made in the car, she can change her mind at that point, and there is nothing you can do about it. There is no agreement that, that she could have signed that will bind her to those previous promises. So having a signed contract that says that consent existed five minutes ago doesn't help you now. It just isn't helpful. So the only period where this consent contract might actually help establish that consent was ongoing and continuous is the time it's literally taking your partner to sign the document. And that's what, two seconds on if they're going real slow and real careful? Any activity you can finish in two seconds, yeah, I'm kind of thinking maybe not. Now, all of that, you know, so it's not useful for proving that consent existed but it might actually be useful for proving that you did something that the law does not allow you to consent to. And the example I give here is that some of these consent contracts are for a BDSM sort of context, a, you know, some sort of context in which uh, other, you know, activities might take place. And some of these activities might be things that the Canadian legal context does not allow you to consent to. One example, and again, this is an example that gets real detailed, so I'm not going to show you the form, but it details knives, needles, and bloodletting. Well, um, probably not lawful here in Canada to engage in that activity. So that, you know, your signed consent form might actually just be a signed confession. That's not a great place to be. But let's assume that you haven't put down that you're going to do something that is not lawful in Canada, that everything that's on there is, you know, is legal and above board, even, you know, so it, what's the risk there? Well, the problem is, is that most people out there are not signing these consent forms. And in fact, it looks real weird. If you're having to put this in front of a judge or a jury to decide whether or not that this was consensual activity, the starting place they're going to be looking at is, this is real weird. And the question you're going to have a very difficult time answering, because, you know, you're going to get up on the stand and say, listen, we had this consent form. You know, these are the reasons why I believe that consent was ongoing this whole time. And they're going to ask you, so, you have this form that you've given us. And you're going to go, yeah, I, yeah, I do. And, you know, it shows that there's consent. And they're going to say, so, in advance of the sexual activity you contemplated and considered that your partner might make a complaint against you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that looks real bad, doesn't it? You know, hey, um, we're doing this, even though I think my partner might make a complaint. It looks like you're planning something untoward. There is, and I don't see that there's any way that you're going to be able to escape that. Um, I've talked to several Crown prosecutors about this issue here in Canada, and all of them have said, oh man, I would so love to have that as evidence in these things, because that just looks super creepy to any judge or jury or anything else. And it makes it super easy for you to potentially get convicted. So, 
Yeah, as I said, I don't believe that these things are a good idea. I go a step further. I think that they are legally hazardous. Any page that you have on that's, you know, that says, hey, listen, we have all of these contracts and also a sexual consent form is one that you should be super skeptical of. Like, hey, um, is the quality of this stuff actually good? Have they ever had a lawyer look at this? Like, is this stuff going to help me with my business transactions or maybe hurt me? This, you should take this as a warning sign. And also, if you are out there dating and somebody whips out one of these forms, it's probably a, you know, a red flag. This is something that maybe you should be a little concerned about. So these forms are a terrible idea in all sorts of ways. Now, what isn't a bad idea? Having a discussion with a prospective partner about, you know, what activities you want to do or not. Being on the same page, having discussion and dialogue and understanding. That is all, you know, that is the little bit that might be useful out of this. The other thing I almost forgot to mention is that a lot of these contracts include clauses that are legally hilarious, just absolute legal chuckle fuckery. And the example I'm going to give is this accidental violation clause on one of these forms. And you're supposed to select whether that's going to be considered an accident or considered an assault. And they're providing people with this notion that somehow this contract can determine what the criminal law is going to do here. Obviously it can't. Your contract cannot rewrite the criminal law, but they're contemplating a very, very specific scenario here. And let's see if we can figure it out as we go along. So this is the contractual language they're using. Accidental violation. Whereas sexual activity is likely to involve rapid movement and impaired judgment, whereas either party to this consent agreement, being male, may, through no fault and without intent, penetrate a female orifice not made available for sexual activity under this consent agreement, Therefore, the proposer and the consenter agree as follows. And the first checkbox is, such an incident shall be regarded as an assault, and the burden of proof to the contrary shall fall on the male party to demonstrate to the satisfaction of the female party that the incident was accidental, and acceptance of such a demonstration shall be taken as implying retroactive affirmative consent, or such an incident shall be resulted or regarded as an accident, and retroactive affirmative consent will be assumed. Oh my God. Um, legally speaking, this is absolute lunacy. Uh, you know, retroactive affirmative consent. Hmm, that, oh right, is that a thing? No, that is not a thing. Um, whether or not it counts as an assault or, you know, can this contract flip the burden of proof and to the satisfaction... None of this makes any sense. Uh, this was clearly written by somebody who's not only not a lawyer, but has never even gone to a coffee shop on a law school campus. This is, you know, it's written in overly flowery language to be like, I am pretending to be a lawyer, although lawyers more and more prefer to move to plain language because, you know, that's simpler for everybody to understand and more useful. But, uh, oh my God. Um, if you were relying on this and saying, oh, this is going to be helpful in some capacity, this is going to be, uh, you know, this is the law that's, it's just so wrong. Like it's not even, uh, this is why I pour a glass. Oh yeah. You can't invert the burden of proof in this. You can't define activities as accidents or assaults through a contract you know you can't no judge is going to take a contract as rewriting the basic rules of criminal law so yeah if you were relying on such a thing you would be crazy and did you figure out what the specific the very specific circumstance they're talking about there is yeah well I think it might say more about the guy writing the contract than it does about anything else. But anyway, so yeah, that's my rant. Um, these things are legally garbage. They are, you know, you should be suspicious of anybody who's offering you one. And quite frankly, uh, yeah, if, if the reason why you're signing a contract is for, you know, role-playing reasons that, you know, playing some fantasy makes, you know, gets you interested, 
fine. I'm not j here to judge, you know, whatever you're doing in terms of what gets you going. But in terms of if you're relying on this for any sort of legal protection or anything like that, then this is, oh my God, terrible. Uh, don't do that. Now, some people say, well, what about the agreements that celebrities get for when they're engaging in sexual activities? Well, typically those would be more in the nature of non-disclosure agreements because, you know, if you're a celebrity, you don't want, you know, the, the person you went out for a night, you know, reporting to the tabloids. So that's typically what they're doing. And if you're a celebrity and you're pulling in millions of dollars, talk to your agent. They'll know, you know, your agent will hook you up with a lawyer who will get you all this stuff. But if you're just looking at something that you're going to download from the internet, don't. This is such a terrible plan. Um, maybe I'll just include a little mini rant on these download a contract from the internet things. Um, it's a great way to get a contract that doesn't apply to you, that was maybe written up by somebody who has no business touching a contract. I will tell you, I'm a lawyer, but I don't do contract work. And so when I have needed contracts, I hire a lawyer to do it. The reason why is because it is way cheaper to pay a lawyer for a contract than it is to pay a lawyer for litigation. You know, a good contract at the outset costs way less than litigation over a shitty one later. Every time you're like, hey, I'm going to start a business with my good friend or my brother or, you know, whoever, and we don't need a proper contract. We're just going to have a handshake agreement because we trust each other and things will never go bad between us. Somewhere a commercial litigator puts a down payment on a boat or a new car. Like this is how you buy cars for, for you know, commercial litigators. Don't do it. It's it makes so much more sense to get the contract done right at the outset. If you think that this is something that's going to matter and, you know, Personally, if somebody came into, you know, and said, hey, I want a contract for advanced sexual consent, I would not participate in that in any fashion. That, you know, it would be unethical, I think, for me to do so. So I can't see that you would ever find one of these things that was drafted by a lawyer. Um, Anyway, I guess I've been harsh enough on those. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, as I, I think I mentioned, I'm still doing research on the Katanko uh, matter. And I'm trying to sort of pin down some more information. I don't want to go and say something that is, uh, you know, not correct or offside. But I'm going to have some opinions once I get all my, uh, my I's dotted and T's crossed. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like this video. Please share it with your friends. Subscribe to see more content. Um, send this one to anybody who raises the whole, you know, sexual consent contract idea. They're just a bad idea. They're, they're not going to do what you want them to do. Anyway, uh, I want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level. Jonathan Wheeler, Canada's National Farms Association, Mike, Kyle Martin, CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited and Mark Olivier Demour. And at the $20 level, Peter Hilger, Mark Whittington, Jane Babin Luxor, Haywire, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Bruno R., Andrew Elsich, and Aaron Del So. And thank you as well to the $10 supporters who are going to be in the crawl immediately following. Um, if you're out on a date and somebody pulls out one of these contracts, you should take that as a red flag. Possibly all of the, you know, all of the flags. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good night and uh, see you next time.